Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flag shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith the Lord God, thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spreadeth forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will walk and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, and for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners, from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, new things do I declare, before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rocks sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare His praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have a long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. I will lead them in the paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images, that say to molten images, Ye are our gods. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I send? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them stand in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, 
and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he had poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not. And it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Praise God. This morning the Spirit of the Lord ministered these portions to us. And we read in chapter 42 of Isaiah several things. In the beginning of this chapter we read about the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. We read it that it's a messianic prophecy. And then as we read on we see about what has been happening in the lives of some people there. And I believe it is on these things the Lord would like to minister to us today and tomorrow. And I was greatly touched and moved by the Lord this morning because we see that the mind of God, the Spirit of God ministering the truth before you want to speak something. And I think it's there we need to recognize God's throne and God's uh, preeminence, God, uh, God's uh, mind that is being made known in our, in our midst even before we could share from God's word. And I, and I really thank the Lord for that God is merciful towards us. Now let's just go to a few things this morning. You know, we read here um, about a ministry. That's one thing that we see here. I do not know if there is anything like a great revelation that God wants to minister to us. But I feel that God has got something specific with regard to His ministry that the Lord wants to speak to us. Now, as we look at Isaiah chapter 42... We see here, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Now all that we read here in the beginning verses of chapter 42 is a ministry that the Lord Jesus Christ came to perform upon this earth. We know that Jesus came here to do a ministry which the Father has outlined and He has desired for His Son. We read quite, you know, quite often the Lord Jesus Christ saying, I am not doing of mine own, but what I hear, that I speak, and what I see, that I do. Praise God. So we see very clearly that Jesus Christ came into this earth to do a ministry uh, to bring forth judgment unto truth. He did not come to do a ministry which He wants to do, but he came to do a ministry which the Father has ordained him to do upon this earth. And I know that today there are many things going on upon the face of the earth in the name of God and in the name of ministry. And I think the burden of the Spirit of God for us, I believe, is to bring us to a right understanding of the burden of the Lord and the kind of ministry that God has called us to perform. And I think that may be the thing that the Lord wants to minister. And I am, I am confirmed by this thought this morning, as Brother Raju was reading out this portion, 
My, my inner man was kindled and I was moved by the Spirit because I could sense the presence and the throne of God here in our midst. Beloved, we see that there are many things going on today. But if we really see with the eye of the Lord and His Holy Spirit, as we have heard before, much of that is mere abomination before God. Do not be, you know, sentimental or do not be feeling, you know, uh, somewhat godly because the name of God is used in much of these things. But we need to see that it does not represent what God has meant through His Son upon this earth. So this is where God wants to minister to us, I believe, these two days that we shall be together. So we see that the Lord Jesus Christ came to do a ministry, and we read here that He is mine elect in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon Him. And it talks about a ministry that Jesus Christ came to do upon this earth. A ministry which was not born in His own strength, but a ministry which was born and performed in the strength of the Father. And I believe that, I'm sure that we all have come in with an openness that God will touch us and change us. Do you believe it? Shall we say amen to that? Let's believe that God will break us, God will change us in these two days, and God will do a new work as He has already prophesied. And God will perform this if we are open to the voice of His Holy Spirit. And it says here, you know, verse 3, we will get into detail later on, but it says, A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flag shall he not quench. It all talks about judgment, right judgment upon the lives of men, and a ministry without any prejudice. A ministry which is flowing from the throne of the Father. A ministry which is commissioned and ordained of God. And we read, as we read again, we read in verse 4, He shall not fail or be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth. Praise God. And I want to encourage each one of us. This ministry has been sent by the Father into this world, as we read here, to, to set judgment in the earth. As we read in verse 4, He shall not fail, nor be discouraged. Praise God. It talks about the ministry of the Lord. And as we look at the ministry of the Lord, we see that He was not discouraged. Do you see the Lord discouraged anywhere? We never see the Lord discouraged. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till He have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for His law. Thus said the Lord, the God, the Lord, He created the heavens and stretched them out. He has spread forth the earth, that which He cometh, that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the Spirit to them that walk thereon. And He says, verse six: I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee a covenant of the people. For a, for a covenant to the people, for a light of the Gentiles. Now verse 7. To open the blind eyes. To bring out the prisoners from the prison. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Praise God. It talks about what the Lord Jesus Christ did. He opened the blind eyes. Now many people think that Jesus Christ was only come to open the natural eyes. But I believe it talks about a ministry. A ministry sent by the Father that will open the eyes of many blind. And it says here, to bring out the prisoners from the prison. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. And we read the same words in a different way in verse 16. And I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. 
And I will lead them in the paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And the crooked things straight, these things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Verse 18. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Look ye blind, you may see. It talks about a blindness which is spiritual. A blindness that has come upon a people. And as we read further, we read, Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the Lord's servant. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he hears, heareth not. Verse 22, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They're all snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. Praise God. The Lord says that he has come to set this captives free from the prison houses. Beloved, there is a ministry that the Lord wants to perform in these days. There's a ministry. And I just want to give us a small uh, reference to this and then we get on to this step by step. Uh, turn with me to the book of Hebrews. In Isaiah chapter 42, we read about the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ first. And what he is going to perform and the condition of a people upon whom he is going to perform this ministry. And then we read, turn with me to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. You know, when we look at the book of Hebrews... We read about the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews is centering around the person of the Lord Jesus. We read many things about the ministry of Jesus there. But as we come to chapter 7, we read about the Melchizedek order. The high priestly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ there. The high priestly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ there. And as we read on, I just want to read a few verses. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave tenth part of all, First being by interpretation king of righteousness. We have heard about righteousness yesterday. And after that also king of Salem, which is the king of peace. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace. The Melchizedek order, the high priestly ministry, is something that springs from righteousness and then flows on to peace. Yeah. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of the days, nor the end of life, and made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patri patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Verily they that were of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to make tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the lines of Abraham. Yeah. Now as we read on, we see about the high priestly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we see in verse 26, For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Verse 28, For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son 
who is consecrated forevermore. Now it's a continuation actually, though it has been put into a different chapter. Now, after having said all these things about the Lord Jesus Christ and his ministry as a high priest, we come to chapter 8 and verse 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest. This is the sum. This is the, this is the cream. This is the bottom line. It reduces to this. That what is, that's what he says. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Therefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Verse 4. For if we were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there were priests that offer gifts according to the law who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, that saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Verse 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much, by how much also, he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Now the Hebrew writer says, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is far superior to the ministry we see in the old covenant. And he reduces all this into two words here. We read that in verse 6. By a, you know, verse 6 is it, but now have you obtained a more excellent ministry. More excellent ministry. Beloved, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is a more excellent ministry. It's a more excellent ministry. That, and it is to that ministry the Lord has called us into. That minister.